So let's get started. Hi, can you see me and hear me okay? Okay, awesome. Okay, great. Uh, my name is Lisa Cummins. I recently joined Taboola, but come from a long history in ad tech, having worked at AppNexus and then Xander. So definitely have experience supporting brands and advertisers with their omni-channel marketing efforts. Um, I'm super excited to be here today and to share some of this amazing Rachel that uh, research that Rachel and I have dug into. So feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if you have any questions about the content shared today. Um, and with that, I'll kick it over to Rachel. Cool. Um, so, hold on. So, my name is Rachel Zalta. Um, I'm Taboola's Global Research and Insights Lead. Um, as you see, my background is in psychology. Um, so, I have an MA from in social psychology, and my focus was always on persuasion psychology and online behavior. I've been at Taboola for almost five years, which was really crazy. Um, and the reason why Taboola hired me was because they understood that looking only at data or only at behaviors is half of the story. And we really need to understand why people are behaving in different ways in order to really succeed. Um, so feel free to follow me on LinkedIn too. Um, and of course, use the hashtag Taboola Insight. Okay, so this graph is, you know, this is from Comscore and it's not a surprise. What we're seeing is that um, in the recent weeks, many, many, many more people, like a crazy amount of people, are visiting news sites. Um, but we all know this because we all experience it, right? I rarely go on news sites and I'm on them very often these days. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a sad circumstance, but from the online behavior perspective, it's interesting to kind of notice the changes. Um, so on our network, we're seeing more people um, on, the, on our publisher sites uh, on the publisher sites that we partner with, we're seeing them spending more time there. Um, and we're seeing a 23% increase in clicks um, in March as opposed to February. Um, we dug into some trends. So how are people behaving and how is it different from you know before this whole crisis? Um, so one of the things that we noticed was that in February or you know in, in the whole rest of the year, we're seeing that people do click more on mobile and tablets as opposed to desktops. But what we're seeing today is that this has um, this has become even more extreme. So people are clicking less on their desktops and more on their mobiles and tablets. When we looked at time of day, this was interesting too. Um, so when we looked at it in February, um, we saw that there was a spike at 8 a.m. and then another one at 3 p.m. till 4 p.m. Um, when we looked at it in, in March or, you know, in this past month, what we see is that it's pretty similar, although earlier in the morning, there is like a huge spike. So like maybe like 7 a.m. I think that is. And, you know, I totally relate to this. Like, this is me. <laughs> like, I wake up in the morning and the first thing I'm doing is I'm checking the news, catching up on what's happening. And, you know, it's it's something, you know, to notice that, you know, this is our behavior these days. Um, and then this is what we're seeing uh, when we look at different days of the weeks, uh, uh, days of the week um, in February. So Friday has some kind of peak. But when we look at it in March, it seems like there's really hardly a difference between the different days of the week. Like we're basically always online. So these trends are interesting to keep in mind when we're putting together campaigns. Another thing that we look at is creatives. So what kinds of creatives are working right now? Now I'm not here to, uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna get, go in depth as to why are people you know, clicking on this or the other. We could talk about that soon, maybe in the questions time. Um, but what we're seeing uh, today is that people are clicking much more on pictures of people than pictures without people. Now this is true also before the crisis, people always like pictures of people, but we're seeing it even more today. So what I was referring to before was, is that, that because of social distancing, um, we want more people, we want more social interactions, so we click on these, um, or is it something else, right? So we kind of have to speculate there. And then we have images that were taken outdoors versus images that were taken indoors. So this one's interesting as well. I'm spending a very large amount of my day indoors. 
Um, and there's kind of a desire to be outdoors, I guess, and, and that might lead to a lot of clicks. So what we're seeing is a lot of clicks on images that were taken outdoors. And I've, I've read a bunch of articles on this and it looks like this is true for other networks as well. And then this was funny. So we looked at images with animals, images without animals. And, uh, you know, in February, we saw that images of animals were doing really well. And today we're seeing um, that people are clicking on images of animals less. So these are some interesting creative trends. Um, you can actually look at, you could find more creative trends that focus on images, videos, titles, keywords, and other uh, cool topics on trends.tabula.com. Um, this, this site takes every single one of Tabula's items um, on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, and it analyzes them for best practices. So you could see things like, you know, black and white or colorful images, what's working well right now. Um, and it, it analyzes them. Uh, you can act every Monday, you'll be able to see the, the new insights based on last week's data. So, you know, today there's uh, a lot of brands are pausing their campaigns. Um, I would say from the data that we saw, a majority of them are pausing them because they're uncertain about how to kind of continue and how to proceed during these times. Um, research shows that companies that keep advertising during recessions, and this is based on, you know, different recessions, obviously not right now, um, they found that these companies are actually, they do significantly better after the recession. Um, so this is something important to keep in mind. Um, you know, we don't want to disconnect from our consumers, you know, right now, this is the time to be there for them. Um, so uh, pausing campaigns is not really the way that we suggest going. Um, but we also don't suggest continuing with your pre-planned campaigns, right? So taking the same creatives that you were planning to show during this month is probably not so appropriate and, and showing them will kind of make your brand feel a little bit disconnected. Um, and there's actually um, some research from IAB showing that a lot of the messaging is changing to mission-based or CSR related advertisements, which we'll cover in a few slides from now. So looking back to help us look forward, while this is hopefully going to be the biggest crisis we may all face in our lives, this isn't the first and likely won't be the last we'll experience. So what should assure all marketers um, on the line is that brands have had to overcome some major crises in the past. And we know that there are strategies that you can follow to help you survive or maybe even help you thrive during this particular crisis. So I will dive into these strategies and examples of who has used them in the past and marketers who have used these strategies during the current crisis. You know, Lisa, I actually love this idea because I feel like, at least for me, I'm so like, I was so confused and shocked when everything happened. It's like, what do I do? And this mm -hmm. approach of kind of like looking backwards and seeing what worked, what actually worked in the past. Um, for me as like a data, you know, I like to base everything I, I, I'm doing on research and data, like this really works for me. So I love it. Yeah, I love it. And even like, I was so surprised in doing research, just finding that there's strategies that date back even through like the early 1900s. So even looking at this first example. Uh, so Kellogg's and Post were major competitors in the early 1920s for a packaged cereal. And so when that, when the Great Depression hit, you know, Post cut their advertising while Kellogg said, you know, let's double our ad budget and move into radio advertisement to promote our new cereal, Rice Krispies. So in doing that, um, their profits rose by nearly 30% by the end of the recession and became what it remains today, which is the industry dominant player. So just want to reemphasize what Rachel said earlier, be present, make sure that you're investing in some sort of marketing efforts because there's a ton of research out there that proves that people who market even during a recession will come out much stronger than those who don't. Right. And like, I wonder what happened with the other, you know, cereal brands during that time that didn't advertise, right? Like, I don't know. Interesting yeah. to look at that. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Where are they today? We don't know because they didn't market. <laughs> 
the next one is um, to help don't instill fear. So before I jump into this first example, I wanted to share a quote that I found in a Forbes article that really helped me understand the psycholo um, psychology backing behind this. So they said, the key thing to remember is that a recession affects minds before wallets. It's seeing other people get laid off that causes consumers to reduce spending and propagate the misery. I mean, this is so true. Even myself, I know I'm finding myself trying to watching every single dollar that I'm spending. Um, and the auto industry is a great example of products that are likely to decline when people have either lost their job or are nervous about the potential of losing their job. So in 2008, uh, Hyundai offered Americans the ability to return a vehicle if they lost their job. This helped them stand out from the competition and remove the fear of buying a really costly item. And more recently, I'm sure most of you have seen the amazing program by Ford where they're offering payment relief to reduce the fear of buying a car right now. So the advertisement uh, campaign has been a huge success so far, and I expect that the positive impact that um, this has on their brand will extend for years to come. And we actually have a video of the Ford advertisement campaign. Mm -hmm. These auto marketers are like awesome. <laughs> I love these campaigns. They make me like shiver <laughs> every time. Yeah, that's awesome. And even just like all of the footage that they had, I mean, Ford pulled, went back to like their original mis mission, which is just helping Americans where, you know, they started around the days of World War II. And so they were able to pull footage even from that time. Um, really cool. So moving on to the next one. Uh, another tactic we see a lot of brands doing right now, as I mentioned earlier, is switching their messaging to mission-based marketing or cause-related marketing. So um, this is a great example of that, where Guinness kind of put people first, encouraged and related. Um, there was this, we are all in this together attitude. Um, so I'll show you this, this video now. Oh, sorry. Guinness has been around for 260 years, and we've been lucky to be a part of your St. Patrick's Day for generations. While we know this year things feel different, we've learned over time that we're pretty tough in this gift world. So what do you really need for some St. Paddy's Day actually? A pint? Sure, we'll take one. Some corned beef? Yeah, you're offering. Irish music? We'll sing along. A big parade? Don't worry, we'll march again. On St. Patrick's Day, we're all Irish, but let's not forget that every day we're all human. What matters is being with people you care about. Whether you're planning to safely celebrate at the pub or host you at home, if you can call the people around you, friends or family, you've already won. When you raise a pint of kids, also remember to raise each other. Be good to one. Celebrate safely and thank the ones protecting us. And now or later, don't forget to stop in and say hi to all our friends and some bars. As for us, we signed a 9,000 year lease in our brewery. So we're not going anywhere. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Like, I actually want to only buy their beer right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome. Definitely got chills. I, I think I get chills every single time I see that. But something else that I think is super cool about this one in particular is that they used a lot of existing footage and put that together in a short amount of time. So take note that this happened um, right before St. Patrick's Day. So that was kind of the peak of when coronavirus started hitting most places globally. And so everyone up until you know a week or two prior had all of like the, like Jameson or Guinness, all had campaigns related to, you know, meeting me at the bar, which is very Irish and, and getting people to spend money on their product and had to completely shift their strategy. And so I think Guinness did a really good job of 
of taking existing assets and putting together something really awesome. This is probably one of my favorite examples uh, that I came across. So the strategy here is to innovate, look for new opportunities or partnerships wherever you can. An example of this dates back to the Great Depression again. Um, so instead of cutting advertising, P&G put marketing dollars towards radio and found a unique way to reach their key demographic, which was housewives. So in a time when most people couldn't afford to spend money on entertainment, P&G brought that entertainment to homes for free. They sponsored a daily radio serial called Oxydoll's Own Ma Perkins <laughs> to promote their soaps. And this program was so successful that they continued it later on and ultimately rolled it out as quote unquote soap operas on TV. So another little history lesson of that's even how soap operas started, which was really cool. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, love that one. Uh, and then another example of the strategy is looking at Netflix and Xbox. So during the 2008 recession, um, they partnered together so that subscribers could stream via the gaming unit directly to TV. So, and remember up until this point, this was really innovative. So you could only watch movies um, either by watching it from like your tv subscriber or uh, netflix previously had mailed everyone dvds so to stream from a gaming unit directly to your tv was awesome and so through this partnership and then by promoting it um even throughout the recession both it made both companies a lot stronger and then one way of how brands are doing this today is um, you'll see also, especially like a lot of alcohol brands partnering with delivery services to provide discounts um, for ordering items to their home. So in this example, you can see that Jameson is showing customers that they can get their whiskey delivered to their door with a discount through their partnership with Drizzly. Uh, okay, the next strategy is to make sure that you are relevant. So unfortunately for KFC, they had a campaign that they had just released before coronavirus called Finger Looking Good. And it was all about eating when you eat chicken, you're, you have to use your hands and lick your fingers and they had to take it down because obviously it wasn't rel relevant relative during this point. <laughs> so if you wanna play that. You know, the thing with this ad is that it's really good, you know, but on the other hand, I'm like cringing. Poor guys, if, if they would have released that like a year ago, it would have been awesome. But watching it now, it just makes you cringe. Oh, no. <laughs> so, glad yeah. so glad that they decided to take that down. I think they're actually in the process of pivoting um, to a new campaign. And then the next one is the Norwegian. So do you want to take this one, Rachel? Yeah, sure. So let's just show the video first. No pictures. No posting. This, this is just for us. I want to be just a little, just a little, just a little. I want to be just a little, just a little. So this is an awesome ad too. The problem was that it appeared or it, it was broadcasted um, during the news time when the news was announcing 
in the beginning of, of the corona crisis that people were stuck on a cruise <laughs> and they couldn't actually leave their cruise because of corona and then suddenly we see this ad so you can have an awesome creative and an awesome ad but like making sure that you're relevant to the general conversation is obviously really important and since then obviously you know they they, they have stopped doing that and made sure not to do that um, and then one thing to keep in mind here is that you know the news is always changing right there are always new updates and always changes so keeping tabs on the news and making sure that before um, before you know you send out your creative or your ad into the world, making sure it still fits with what's happening is, is also really important. Okay. Uh, the next strategy is to use humor, tread carefully. So I really like this example of an awesome um, ad campaign that JetBlue launched in 2018. So remember during this time, um, Every time you go on an airplane now, it's really common to like have TV or to have free food service and free drinks, but that wasn't really the case back in the early 2000s. And so, um, you know, they were kind of pioneering the way for that type of customer service. And so in a time when people weren't spending as much, if they did have to travel, they wanted this to be an awesome experience for everyone. And so they brought to life this really humorous campaign where it's quote unquote at JetBlue, we don't fly. That's for other airlines. We jet. So making people feel like even during a time when you can't spend as much money for a first class experience, if you fly with us, you will still get that experience no matter what you're paying. Love that one. Um, so here, I, humor is probably my favorite strategy, you know, at least I feel on a personal level, like I, I need that comic relief right during my day to like see something funny. And I love when brands are able to do it. So like time out, change their logo to like, time in right now, which I found very clever. And um, there's an Israeli brand called Kif Kif, um, which is a type of Kit Kat, I guess, right? Um, and Kif Kif is, are actually two separate words. Kif means high five and Kif means fun. So because of social distancing, they removed the Kif, the high five part of their name. And now they're only Kif, they're only fun, uh, which I also thought was very cute and clever. I like that one. Um, and then, you know, another another thing that we're seeing on our network and on other networks as well is actually ads are practicing social distancing kind of too. Um, so we're seeing that people um, that the, the people in ads are not touching. They're not holding hands. Um, they're not like hugging, uh, we're, at which, you know, in, in other days we've seen that we've seen a lot of ads of people touching. Um, so that's a big change that we're noticing, um, and we're actually partnering uh, with Columbia University on a study about this and how social distancing is actually impacting actual ad campaigns. Um, so this is a cool, a cool other strategy that we're seeing that that's working. Um, and one more thing here is, you know, not to be afraid to be authentic. Um, at Taboola, we always talk about being authentic and being real. We found that we we find over and over again that images and videos that are more real work better on our network. But I think it's especially true these days. Um, so we're all stuck at home. We're all working from home, and it kind of makes you. It allows you to relate with the other person when you see that we're all in the same boat. Um, and so Virgin Media released this new ad in the UK that I really liked. Um, and for this, they actually use clips from social media. Um, so it's really like user generated content. Um, let me play that for you. This is my COVID-19 vlog. I've been in isolation for a week now in this shed.
So um, we just wanted to end with one note on performance marketing. Um, so we actually took a look at purchase campaigns throughout our network um, in the last month. Um, and aside from the obvious food and fashion verticals, um, there were some other verticals that were actually doing, you know, their purchases actually went up, right? So we're seeing more purchases for them. Uh, so we saw it for beauty, education, finance, and lifestyle. Um, and we tried to dig into their campaigns a little bit to try to understand, wait, like how, how are these verticals doing well right now? So um, we found some, some cool campaigns and, and we wanted to share that with you. So in the beauty, in the beauty aspect, what we found there is that a, uh, a lot of beauty campaigns are focusing on products that can be used at home. So a lot of like, you know, face masks or hair dyes that you can actually order the product and do it on your own. Um, you know, people need to be beautiful even when they're at home. Um, from the education perspective, we're seeing a lot of online courses. Uh, from the finance perspective, a lot of products that are helping people save during this time. And from the lifestyle vertical, which lifestyle is basically any product that you know makes your life better. So a lot of gifts are there, like like, like smart watches, DNA tests, different devices and gadgets, and even flowers. Um, so we saw that those are also doing better. And we're thinking that maybe it has to do with the fact that people have more time now, so they're they're you know they're looking into these new products. Um, and maybe they want to give gifts. Maybe they're buying these things for gifts to loved ones that they're not able to see. So um, this is a cool, uh, some cool data from the performance perspective. And um, Stackline actually just released this. So these are top 100 fastest growing categories uh, from e-commerce. And there's some cool, like some surprises here. So we needed to share this. Um, so bread machines, right? Like this got, this has a huge increase these days. Disposable gloves. Okay. Obviously, but bread machines. So I guess people are maybe making their own bread and then there's weight training and computer monitors and chairs, right? I just bought a new chair, right? So there are a lot of, there are a lot of um, e-commerce categories that are actually growing today. So understanding what those are and figuring out how to communicate with your consumers in the best way um, is, is, you know, what we need to do these days. Lisa, you want to grab the takeaways? Yes, for sure. Okay, so um, just wrapping up, the key takeaways we want you to remember from today is everyone is online. So there's obviously been a, never a better time than now to reach consumers through um, digital advertising. Uh, trends are constantly changing. And so to make this as easy as possible for you to follow, um, remember that we have Taboola Trends as a resource, which is updated every week. And if you ever need help in reading the, that trends page, um, feel free to reach out to us or your account manager. Um, and make sure that you're adjusting your message to be relevant to the current um, environment. So help, do not instill fear, innovate and look for new opportunities or partnerships, uh, be relevant to the general conversation, uh, keep tabs on the news, be present, put people first, encourage and relate, use humor, try to make everyone laugh during this time and don't neglect performance goals. Awesome. So um, we'll end with this. Um, we're actually, we're launching a webinar uh, series. So this was the first webinar in the series. Uh, the next one is going to be on April 16th. Um, and it's going to be about how to develop a winning content marketing strategy quickly. And it will be hosted by myself and a surprise guest. Um, so uh, if you want to sign up to this series or to any other future webinars, um, you can go to explore.tabula.com slash tabula hyphen insights hyphen webinars. Um, so feel free to sign up there. Okay, so now we're going to take a few questions. Um, we'll give you guys a few more minutes to uh, send over questions. Um, before we read the questions, I'm going to emphasize that this deck will be sent to you afterwards, the deck and the recording, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and we'll wait a couple more minutes to, to get more questions.
Okay, so the one of the questions here, at least I'm seeing, is are the trends on trends.taboola.com based on real data? So the answer there is yes. Um, what we do for trends.taboola.com is we take every single one of the items that ran in our network every single week. And we take all of the images that had a person and we average the CTR there and all the images without a person and we get the average CTR there and we see which one has a higher average CTR. Um, so, and we do that for different uh, types of um, different types of qualities in the image. So we'll do that for men and women and we'll do it for black and white and color and person, no person, et cetera. Um, so it's always based on real data. And as I said, it updates every Monday. Uh, next uh, question. Yeah, and also calling out that there's static and video specific um, data as well. And we also just added a coronavirus section so you can see readership trends um, around coronavirus as well. Awesome. Um, cool. So there's another question here. Any suggestions for video creation during these times? Yeah, these times are tricky for video creation for sure. Sure. I so um, I can take this one. I think just pulling in from some of the examples we saw today, I think there are a few brands who did a really good job of kind of shifting their campaign. And obviously, like you can't go out and produce new footage right now. So either looking through any existing footage that you own or have, uh, just like the Ford example or the Guinness example, um, or mixing that with some stock videography, or you can even be scrappy. I think right now is a really cool time where you can be really creative and more authentic. I mean, even celebrities are posting a lot on uh, about them at their homes without makeup and giving a real true glimpse into their real life. Um, so just like the Virgin Airlines example, you know, I think there's a number of different ways that you can create video in the current environment. Yeah, definitely agree. It's definitely a challenge, but I also feel like there are going to be new creative approaches, like things we haven't tried up until now because, you know, we relied on, on you know, shooting videos, right? Shooting, uh, like, and, and now we, we can't do that anymore. So what's, what are, what are advertising agencies going to come up with? You know, I'm kind of like interested in, in, in seeing that. Um, okay, so one an, another question I'm seeing here. Uh, this is cute. So, what was your favorite ad that you've seen recently? So, um, Lisa, which one was your favorite? I would say it's kind of a tie between Ford or Guinness. Again, I kind of know that both of those companies have. I've listened to some of the marketing folks from their team talk about the shift in campaign strategy. And so I just think they did such a good job with changing their creative and changing their entire campaigns within a matter of like five days. So I really applaud them. And plus I really love just seeing like old footage from back in the day. Yeah, I agree. I am so in awe from those campaigns. Um, and I guess like, I, I, as I said, like I love the humorous campaigns. So there are there are actually a lot of, of really funny ads out there. Um, I guess from the ones that we spoke about, I like the time in and time out and the cute gift ones. Those those are really cute. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and then one uh, another question that I'm seeing here: What are the advertising trends that you're seeing in Japan? Um, so yeah, that's a good question, and you could really ask that for every country and every vertical. And I guess um, I'll grab that one, Lisa. So so I guess the one of the one of the ways to see this that you guys can actually all see that at home is by going to the site trends.tabula.com. Um, so I'm actually on the site now. I'll just I'll just I'll, I'll read out some cool trends. So if you go on trends and you filter by uh, Japan. Um, what you'll be able to see are the different analyses. So for example, black and white images are getting a 341% higher CTR, which is a really high number. So that's what's working in Japan right now. And then animals are working in Japan, outdoor images, I guess maybe they're working everywhere right now. Um, you know, people, food, uh, men are better, are working better than, than images of women. Um, so there are a lot of really cool trends there, and you guys can actually check them out for each vertical in each country, uh, depending on where you're in or where your advertising campaigns are focusing on. Cool, so I think we're actually running out of time. Um, you guys can definitely all send questions um, and use the hashtag Tabula Insights. Um, I 
uh, had a great, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this webinar. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and that's it for me. So have a great rest of, rest of your day, guys, um, and keep in touch. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone.